refugees! We are refugees! We are not criminals! Thousands of African migrants stage mass protests in Israel. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says infiltrators are threatening Israel's Jewish social fabric. A legitimate stand against undocumented immigrants or a violation of human rights. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to Inside Story. I'm Stephen Cole. African migrants in Israel have poured onto the streets to voice their frustration at tough new immigration policies. Thousands have made the dangerous journey across the border with Egypt in recent years seeking asylum. They want to be recognised as refugees. But Israel says they are illegal job seekers. A new law permits the indefinite detention of migrants without valid visas. But the measure is being condemned by human rights groups. So. Lots to discuss with our panel in a moment. But first, Tom Ackerman reports for Inside Story from Tel Aviv. Over the years, Israel has welcomed 100,000 black Ethiopians who claim Jewish ancestry. But the thousands more Africans who've reached Israel in search of work and physical security have never won legal recognition. And now the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is increasing the pressure on all 60,000 in the country to go. First, it shut off their only point of access, the border with Egypt that's been sealed by a high-tech fence. And under a newly amended law, those still in the country may be sent to a nighttime detention facility in the Negev Desert for up to one year without trial. Those who violate the curfew may be imprisoned. We are refugees! We are refugees! We are refugees! The migrants are demanding that the government recognize their right to petition for refugee status. You want to leave Israel? Because it's, it, 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 the South Sudan, we don't have any security. But the government says Israel is not obliged to be a haven. The main problem is that Israel don't check asylum requests of Eritrean and Sudanese. And as a result, uh, none of them is being recognized as a refugee. Officials argue that Israel is being unfairly held to a higher standard than other countries challenged by a migrant population. There are tens of millions in Africa who are seeking haven in Western countries. Because we're the only Western country with a land border to Africa, the potential danger for our country is great. We are fighting a struggle for the future character of our country, and we have no intention of compromising. The government says it's following international conventions by not forcibly deporting migrants. Instead, it's offering them money to leave voluntarily, and promises that 5,000 of them will be departing this year. But what happens to the other 50,000 or more, including those who've never known any other country? The government isn't saying. For Inside Story, Tom Ackerman, Al Jazeera, Jerusalem. So let's bring in our guests. And I must point out at this stage that we did try to get someone representing the Israeli government to join us on the program, but no one was available. So, on the panel, we do have, from Jerusalem, Yehuda Hakenhan, a peace activist and member of the Semitic Action Movement for Grassroots Dialogue. Also joining us from Tel Aviv is David Sheen, a journalist who co-produced a short documentary called Israel's New Racism, the persecution of African migrants in the Holy Land. But let's start with Yehuda Yachan in Jerusalem. Israel hasn't granted refugee status to a single Eritrean or Sudanese national, even though European countries have granted such status to more than 70% of asylum seekers from both countries. So why is Israel so different? Well, first of all, Israel is different because we're not a European country, we're not a Western country, we're a Middle Eastern country. Although we have a problem in which our, mid, our ruling class it wants very much to be part of the West without really understanding the West. So when it comes to problems like asylum seekers, which is a relatively new problem for us, meaning you have to keep in mind that the, the Jewish people, although we possessed and enjoyed political independence thousands of years ago and had to deal with the complexities of running a society which included 
uh, figuring out the role of the other in society, the non-Jew in a Jewish society. This is something that we haven't de dealt with for thousands of years, and now that we're back on the stage of history and we once again have independence in our country, we're once again learning how to deal with these complex issues. And when I look at this uh, issue of asylum seekers coming from Africa, I see it almost as an opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, we have almost 100 years of baggage with the Palestinians, in, in which there's a lot of bad blood and a lot of mutual animosity uh, due to just the events of the last century. And it's hard to get Israelis to really wrap their heads around what the role is of the other in our society. And uh, here we have these asylum seekers coming from Africa. It's a new non-Jewish population in our society. And um, I'm hoping that this helps us to formulate uh, a better approach that we could then maybe apply also to our relations with the Palestinians. David, why does Israel show such reluctance to grant refugee status to African asylum seekers? I I'm looking at the uh, figures here. The figures show that since its establishment in 1948, fewer than 200 individuals have been recognized as refugees under the convention. So why is Israel so different? Well, there's two reasons for that. Uh, on one hand, there's this security culture that is the dominant ideology in the country and in the government, which says that if the Jewish people ever drop below a certain percentage in the population of the country, then they're going to be victims of persecution. I mean, it's based on a legitimate fear of previous persecution, but it's taken to a paranoia extent where they're just working on all levels to prevent any uh, repopulation by non-Jews who already live in the country or immigration by non-Jews who don't live in the country. And on the other hand, there's just straight you know, Jewish supremacy. There are people who straight out don't want any Jewish people in the country, regardless of whatever security or non-security issue results. Um, so they brought in uh, a man named Joel Moss, who worked you know, with the Department of Homeland Security in the United States and the Department... and they essentially brought him here in order to create a refugee policy so that the Israeli government for the first time in its history could deal with this influx which hadn't happened previously. And what he said was, you know, I came here as, a, as an Orthodox Jew and as someone who's worked with refugees my whole life to help the state of Israel deal with this issue and instead they created a system that was purposefully doomed to fail, doomed to turn all these people away. Uh, let's go to Basau Ibrahim. Basau is a Sudanese migrant, a member of the Committee of African Asylum Seekers uh, in Israel. He joins me on the line. Basau, Israel says most uh, of the immigrants are illegal job seekers. Is that accurate? No, it's not. We are not immigrant workers. We are asylum seekers. We decide to come to Israel because we have problems in our countries, political problems. We are not coming for work. The work is not our aim. We are not here because we need to uh, we come for work. We are refugees. Uh, Yehuda uh, Hakahen, uh, you've heard uh, what Bissau uh, had to say. He, he's saying they're not illegal uh, job seekers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're not um, there because they want to make a buck. They're there because they're refugees. Israel denies uh, okay. their refugees. How would you describe how the government is treating these people? Well, I would say it's wrong. I, I say it's wrong. I think we could do a lot better. We could obviously also do a lot worse. From what I hear, there are countries in the region that just shoot them at the border. Uh, we're not doing that, and I'm happy we're not doing that. At the same time, I think we really, like I said before, uh, we really have no experience with this. I think our government simply doesn't know what to do in this situation and is grasping at straws, and we need to maybe use this as an opportunity on how... how I, I think that it shouldn't be... A, um, a competition. And I think one of the problems we have is that a lot of our officials and a lot of the Israeli public might view this as somehow a competition between um, the Jewish character of the state 
and the needs of the other, in this case, the asylum seekers from Africa, the refugees from Africa. And I think uh, what I'd like to see, you know, for me, a, a Jewish state doesn't mean a state with a majority Jewish population. For me, a Jewish state really means a state that's expressing uh, Jewish values. And I think those values include uh, properly treating other people in need and, and properly treating people in need of refuge. Uh, David Sheen, just about uh, everybody uh, who went to Israel, who's come to Israel, is an immigrant. It's a huge immigrant uh, history. But it seems today you have to be the right kind of immigrant to get the backing of the government. Mm -hmm. It's not just today. It's always been the case. Uh, it's just that today there are very few, if any, populations of Jews that are immigrating en masse to Israel because there are no more populations of Jews that are at risk in the world. And there are populations of non-Jews that are at risk, like these people from Eritrea, Sudan, and other places in sub-Saharan Africa. But that doesn't explain um, the hostility, does it's it, David? frankly it's scandalous. It is. Let's have a look at the documentary. Well, what does explain the hostility well, is let's, that... Well, let's the... have a look at the documentary you co-produced. Just a short clip from it. If they grant me all the tools, and I'm trying to acquire all the tools, and it's not easy, if they grant me all the tools without exception, in less than a year, not a single infiltrator will remain in the state of Israel. Well, there is that kind of behavior um, that led a lot of uh, Jews to go to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, how do you explain that this lack of warmth or indeed sympathy towards the new immigrants? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple factors here. One, they're both actually to blame on the government. One is that the government sent all of these African asylum seekers to one particular neighborhood, the poor area of South Tel Aviv, that basically saying, now we're not going to allow these Africans to work and we're going to put them all in the neighborhood where there's already poor people to begin with and let them stew in their own juices. So when you're poor to begin with and you're living in a neighborhood that all of a sudden doubles and triples in population without any also increase in the amount of services, you're going to feel uh, stressed out. So part of that is the stress of the inhabitants of the area. But part of it is, again, the government inciting racial hatred, calling them disease bearers, calling them criminals, calling them terrorists, calling them rapists and murderers, and feeding people's paranoia and, and increasing it. And so there you have you know, throngs of people walking down the streets and any African they see screaming and yelling and swearing, even young children, even sexual swears. I mean, just a year ago we had, you know, people running through the streets, breaking beer bottles over people, smashing storefront windows, throwing firebombs into an African kindergarten. Well, I mean, the level of sheer hatred on the streets is, is really difficult to compare to anything in these decades. You'd have to look back over half a century to see anything similar in the United States or well, Europe. Uh, others in Israel are, are more sympathetic, supporting the migrant uh, protests. One Israeli writer was moved to say he was embarrassed and ashamed and the problem should be dealt with in the most uh, humane way. Uh, Yehuda Hakahen, um, is this a political problem? Is this left against right? No, the truth is I think the terms left and right are very misleading in this country. Israel is the only country I know of where the term left is synonymous with the ruling class, the more westernized ruling class, and the term right is synonymous with the more traditional working class. So, so I think the terms are problematic in, in terms of how we apply them versus how they're applied in the rest of the world. Okay, I think for the well, most part, the reason I used left out, and right was because the Prime Minister, with Benjamin mostly Netanyahu, working class and lower who class is generally Jews. regarded I'm sorry? to be... Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the reason uh, I was using mm -hmm. left and right is for obvious oh, reasons. Okay. Netanyahu said this sure. week he viewed the African influx um, which has been stemmed mm. by offense, we'll hear more about that in a moment, uh, as a threat to Israel's Jewish social fabric. So that's right at the top of government, 
saying immigrants are a threat mm -hmm. to Jewish social fabric. Is he saying that there's, there's a risk of, uh, of, of, of infecting Jewish blood or something? Uh, no, I think it's a. I, th I think his statement is much more vague than that. I think he's talking about the Jewish character of the state, which uh, journalists and public figures are always uh, concerned with. Uh, I think that, uh, like I said earlier, I think that how we treat the other in our society, especially asylum seekers, will be an, a reflection or should be a reflection of Jewish values. So I think, again, the, the government has it backwards and this should be an opportunity to, to express the Jewish character of the state and not worry to, about the, gov uh, the character of the state being threatened. Is, is building a fence uh, uh, the sort of thing you're talking about? Because Israel has built this security fence along its border with Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, this fence runs for, what, just over 200 kilometers, 240 kilometers uh, from the edge of the Gaza Strip to Israel's southernmost city of Elat. Now, Israel says almost 10,000 people entered the country illegally in the first half of 2012. But this is keeping them out. It's a barrier of five meters high. It cost $370 million. And from Israel's point of view, well, it appears to be working. Well, it very definitely is working. The number of illegal uh, migrants dropped to just over 30 in the first six months of 2013. So that would seem to indicate that Mr. Netanyahu um, and the right-wing Likud party doesn't want immigrants. Right. They, they seem not to want to take responsibility um, well, for the asylum migrants, seekers. Too, and again, my, my perspective... My perspective is that if people are in danger and people are fleeing persecution and people want to come to our country, and then, then we have an obligation to, at the very least, to offer them a safe refuge and, and figure everything else out from there. But again, it's a complicated situation, and I, and I reiterate my point that I don't think uh, our government in, in the 65 years of statehood has dealt with this before or knows how to deal with this. And as David pointed out, you know, what they did was they basically put the asylum seekers into one of the poorest neighborhoods of Tel Aviv, where you have people already already uh, fighting for scraps from the table who now suddenly have all these new people uh, who are seen as competition for, for, for jobs, resources, etc. So it's not a healthy situation. It hasn't been handled well so far and our, my hope is that it will start to be handled better from here on in. Uh, and David Sheen, are you too hopeful that this will um, be handled mm -hmm. better? Because uh, I, I just want to mention Israel uh, amended what it calls the infiltration law. Um, uh, very recently, um, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, basically, they can people can be de detained. The law says migrants can be held without time limit, pending voluntary repatriation, deportation, or resolution of asylum requests. Now, the migrants can be sent to a new detention centre in the Negev, which is seen as a halfway house, described by the government as an open prison. Um, the UN's High Commissioner for Refugees says Israel's policy causes hardship and suffering and flouts the 1951 World Treaty on the treatment of refugees. So this is another step banning migrants and another blow to possible refugees seeking refuge. Yes. On the one hand, you have the government policy of wanting to expel all of the non-Jewish Africans in the country. On the other hand, it's, the country is dependent upon the support of Western democracies, so it can't afford to do something as horrific as actually sending them back to the countries of origin where they were persecuted and where they will be persecuted again. So, as per the former interior minister stated specifically that the policy is to make their lives miserable. The idea is by refusing to allow them to work and send money out and et cetera, et cetera, putting them into what can only be called as a concentration camp or a jail with you know, furloughs a couple times a day, but it's a jail in every sense of the word, um, then they will become so immiserated, their lives will become so sad that they will say, okay, fine, I give up send me back, you know, I, I, that, that's the idea of the government policy. And then the government can say, well, we didn't deport them. You know, they left of their own accord. They gave up after we made their lives miserable. So that's the government policy to do so. And to go back to what, and, and incidentally, uh, you said earlier that it would only be for a year, but in fact, they can be incarcerated there indefinitely. To be specific, there is no time limit with which they can be incarcerated in this so-called open jail, which is a jail with furloughs.
Uh, yeah, and in that addition, is, that, just David, to refer that, that, to something you're, you're, that you asked about earlier, is it about race? Is it, mm -hmm. no, no, you're absolutely right. I just wanted to say um, that amendment means that it's reduced from three years to a year, but you are also very mm -hmm. right that they can be detained uh, uh, to an unlimited period. But uh, carry on with the point you were making. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I just wanted to add that there, certainly there is something about uh, ethnic or genetic or racial an issue here. Um, for example, in the last few years, as is the case in every country where you have different populations living together, there have been couples, romantic relationships that have formed between Israelis and Africans who have come here, men with women, women with men, and the government has not permitted any of these couples to marry. In some first of all, you're not allowed to, Jews can't marry non-Jews in this country. They can only do so in another country and then come back here. Uh, when people have applied to convert to Judaism, all the Africans who have applied to convert to Judaism, Benjamin Netanyahu's office rejected every single one of those claims. So even Africans who are making an effort to be part of this Jewish fabric that he's talking about defending have been rejected outright every single one. The justice minister says, we can't allow them to convert because then they would become citizens. So, I mean, you have it straight from the highest government officials saying this. And if you go to the street level demonstrations and you listen to what people are saying, very often the, the rhetoric is, we don't want you stealing our women. We don't want you marrying our women. Well, what can that be understood as if not the most base form of racism? And that is underlying a lot of the anti-African sentiment in this country, frankly, this fear of African gene code or something like that. And uh, it, it's really sad because when you look at the African children, the children of African refugees, it's mind-blowing. Their, their dress code, their language, they speak Hebrew better than any, you know, anyone. They just pick it up and they run with it and they get along so well with their Israeli-born compatriots. They're Israeli in every sense of the word. It's quite clear that Africans are completely capable of assimilating into the culture and absorbing the culture and being part of the culture and contributing to the culture, contributing their own flavor, which you know, is part of what Israel is trying to project to the world, that it's a multi-ethnic, multicultural democracy in which we all get along as a mosaic. Well, if that's the case, here are people who are making every effort to do so. It's not like the discourse in other countries is, you know, we, these immigrants aren't assimilating, so it's not working out. Here, you have a group of people who want to integrate and are doing so whenever they are permitted to do so. And it's, it's for that specific reason that the government and grassroots people are rejecting that. And Yehuda Hakahen, uh, we talked about colour, we talked about party politics, whether the left's more sympathetic than the right. Um, but is this at base, is this at base about keeping Israel Jewish? It's possible. I think what people don't seem to understand is that uh, the Jewish people is probably one of the oldest peoples still in existence. And one of the ways that that has continued to be the case is because we have had a certain restrictions over, year, over the centuries on who we marry or, or how a person joins the tribe. Like there's like most ancient peoples in the world, there's actual a ritual process for somebody who is not part of the tribe to join the tribe. I know that my tribe, I come from the tribe of Levi, um, which uh, I actually have more restrictions on who I can marry than most Jews do. And this is part of our culture, and it's been part of our culture for thousands of years, and I don't really feel the need uh, to apologize when our culture doesn't measure up to the standards of Western society in modern times. I think that David pointed out that the state of Israel, specifically our ruling class, likes to project a certain image to the world. That image isn't always true. We're, we're not a Western country, and maybe we're the closest thing to a democracy in the Middle East, and maybe we're the only country in the Middle East that's even admitting asylum seekers from Africa, but we're not really part of the West. We really are very much part of the Middle East. Our culture is very Middle Eastern. Uh, we're from the Middle East. We're in the Middle East. The Jewish people is a Semitic people. And I think that, uh, it, to be fair, like Walla, on the one hand, I want to challenge my government's policies on how they're treating uh, asylum seekers internally. I don't think it's fair externally for people to come and hold us to a yardstick other than the yardstick of the Middle East. Well, as I said earlier, we did try to get 
someone representing the Israeli government to join us in the show, but no one was available. But instead, my thanks to my excellent guests, David Sheen and Yehuda Hockerhan, for their views and expert opinions. A reminder, you can find this programme and many more at facebook.com slash Al Jazeera Inside Story. And why not like us there too? I'm Stephen Cole. Thanks for watching from me. Goodbye for now.